The heartbeat of your engine is the oil in which lubricates it. Power can be extracted from the fuel you use based on additives you put into it. This is a video I've wanted to make for a long time and I'm happy to do it. My name's Eric, you're watching Sebastian Blue Crew on YouTube. And you may have seen, if you're subscribed, or maybe you're not, I hope you do click the subscribe button and follow along. Check out the Facebook page as well. If you've seen our videos, you may have seen words like clots, K-L-O-T-Z. You may have seen clots on a banner that's hanging on the front of our bench in the shop. You may have seen clot stickers on our jet skis, mine, Chris's, Michelle's. Even Almondo has made the switch to clots after we rode in the monster hole. I said, bro, you gotta try this stuff. What are you doing? Oil is not oil. And I wanna show you that in this video because we have a lot of products here. And this is what I use. Some of this stuff has been around a little while. Some of this stuff we just got again to fill up. You can tell Chris's new stuff over here. He listened to me and he got some for his ski. Clots goes way back. I first learned about clots in 2005. I had a Banshee. Here's my Banshee here. Well, this is not when I sold it, but I had a Banshee and there was, I bought it at a race shop up north and the guy that sold it to me said, before you buy this, there's two things you need to know. Number one, they're forged pistons. You must warm this thing up before you touch that throttle or you're going to ruin the engine. Number two, you must run only clots oil in this thing. That's it, period. It was a race machine. And that was when I first discovered clots. And after smelling that and seeing what that does with my engine and how much better it runs, I will never go back. And I promise you, this isn't a paid endorsement. I'm wearing a clot shirt just because I bought it. I wanted to look like somebody instead of having a white shirt on in the garage here. And it kind of looks cool. But I promise you this, after this video, you're gonna know a lot more than you ever did about clots. We're gonna go through the website and show you some things that I don't have here, but that you could benefit from, like their race gas and their racing gas additives. But we're gonna show you here in this video what I have behind us, what we run as far as lubricants, power additives, because I have to run some of this stuff in order to keep that engine alive. It's not just something like snake oil. I have to do it. When you dump that much money into a jet ski and you want it to go that fast with that much horsepower, when you heard people saying, oh, I blew my motor up, Half the time, it was probably from either the fuel they were running or the oil that they weren't running. And I can tell you this, the one thing that I'll add to the two things the guy told me when I bought my Banshee is I will never ever blow my motor because of the oil I use. I kind of did that for fun the other day, but I've tried blowing this thing up. I got so frustrated putting all this money into it and tweaking this and tweaking that and reading forums. And I said, you know what? Let's see how really good this thing did. Let's see how good these bearings hold up. Let's see how good the oil is. I can't blow it up, whether it's in the water or on my trailer, she just keeps on ticking. So let's talk about clots in this video. I'll give you a brief history. We'll show you about some of the stuff here. And then we'll go into the website, show you some more stuff. And at the end of this video, let me know in a comment what you think. If you don't believe me, please go online, check reviews, go anywhere, go to eBay, go to Amazon, go to Klotz, go to different companies all over the web and look at the reviews. There are hardly any people, people that said that Klotz is no good. So don't listen to me if you don't believe me. Just learn here, go outside on your computer in the outside world and learn for yourself how good this stuff is. So John Klotz is the creator of this extraordinary brand. John Klotz started way back in 1959. He had a go-kart and he wanted it to be the fastest go-kart there is. He had that desire for speed like I've been doing dumping money into my engine. And he formulated this pure synthetic oil. And then he would run it and he would race it and he'd take the engine apart and he'd look for hot spots. He'd look to see if the thing's actually wearing down. He originally called it Special Formula. And then a year later, he developed it after selling it to other kart racers that he was beating. Everybody said, what is that smell? What are you running? Why are you so fast? He was selling it to other guys at the track and everybody was winning. Then he named it Technoplate. Technoplate is the original name for the Clot Special Formula. And since then, they've come out with a lot of stuff. This isn't just for two strokes. You have two stroke oils, you have four stroke oils, you have gear lubes, you have shock oil, you have engine assembly lube, jet pump lubes, storage stabilizers, ethanol treatment, and more. We're gonna show you all that. 
But what I have here is what we normally use. Now, some of the stuff we've just re-upped on and some of this stuff may look rusty on the can because it's been sitting for a while and I don't use it that often. But we're gonna show you a brief little bit of this stuff and why I need to use it and what it actually does. I'll start here first with the bean all. Now, bean all is how I first learned about clots. Back then in 2005, that's probably all I knew about clots at the time. But that was what the guy, I bought my Banshee, that's what he said. Clots, bean all, you have to run bean all. And some people pronounce it ben oil or bean oil. It is a racing castor oil Probably the highest performance racing castor oil you can get. A couple very good facts about it. This stuff blends with alcohol, methanol, um, gasoline. It, it blends with, you know, if you're running E85, if you're running uh, methanol injection or whatever you're running on your Banshee or your drag bike or whatever, this stuff will blend with it. Now something like a, a Walmart STP two-stroke oil will separate in different uh, blends like that and ethanol and methanol. They're not designed for that. And guess what? Every gas you get at the pump nowadays has some sort of ethanol in it. So this stuff really stays suspended all the time and it will keep suspended even in cold weather. Now, racing castor oil has a couple really good properties besides the fact that it blends with everything. Beanol, or racing castor oil in general, uh, castor oil is developed from a castor bean and it's very, very viscous. It's very uh, got a high lubrication factor. But in doing so, the downfall may be sometimes if you're not turning high enough RPM or you're not really having a hot enough engine, uh, it can gum up. Now this is extra degummed and fortified so that they tried to eliminate that. But by nature, uh, castor bean or castor oil will do that. So not recommended just to run any kind of clots in any kind of application. You wanna make sure that the clots you're running is for your specific application if possible. Plenty of people run this in different things. I've heard of people running this in their weed eaters and it may or may not be a good idea. Maybe it smells good and it runs a lot better than that garbage you're buying from Walmart. But racing castor oil like this, uh, we talked about it blends with different things, uh, it stays blended. It also has a very high lubrication factor. It smells great. All this clot stuff here has the famous clots smell, a racy scent. And that happened to me a couple times out in the river. I was talking to some guys and uh, I was riding in front of the one guy and he stopped, he said, I, I don't know what happened. Uh, something's burning or I don't, I don't recognize that smell. I've never smelled that. I might need to stop. I said, that's, <laughs> that's the 102 octane I'm running with the bean all racing castor oil. What? And then I got to give him the whole clot story and tell him. And then next thing you know, those persons are looking for those as well. So bean all is great. A downfall for bean all is that it is hydroscopic. So it can attract moisture. So probably not the best thing in the world to run straight bean all with your gas in a boat or a watercraft. Specifically, if you have a stock motor and you're not turning high RPM and high compression like we are, you may, it may run good and smell good, but over time it may gunk up a little bit. So let's move to the next product because I'll show you what happens when you mix these two or what I do, okay? Because I have a special way of mixing my own fuel. So I'll use Chris's nice new bottle here because mine's got some oil on it. This is the Klotz Ski Craft. And this is, it says on here, Technoplate Ski Craft Synthetic, okay? The good thing about this is, this is designed for personal watercraft, for boats, for uh, jet skis and stuff like that. Good thing about this is, it can be for injection, for oil injection or premix. Now we premix all our stuff, and the Beanol I didn't mention is premix only. You kind of don't want to run that in injection because it can clog up over time, little tiny orifices in the injectors. So the Ski Craft is good because it is the same quality and the same uh, synthetic lubricant that clots would deliver, but it's designed for watercraft. So typically watercraft aren't turning a really, really high RPM like a Banshee would be. Maybe mine is, or it's not yet, but it's going to be. So this is what I've always used in all my jet skis. Even Michelle's stock 587 and her GTX runs on this. And you can, again, mix this at different ratios. Uh, a couple things here, peak film strength and anti-scuff protection, as all cloth lubricants say. Clean burn. Now this is a very clean burn product. And the, the way I know that is because when I break in a motor, uh, normally you don't wanna use something this synthetic to break in a motor, okay? I'd hate to even mix this in the video, but let me show you an example of a substandard two-stroke oil. This is two-stroke universal engine oil. Maybe all right for weed eaters or whatever, but 
In the event of building another motor and putting new rings and having your pistons honed, you don't want to really jump right to a clot ski craft or bean all. It's too viscous. It's too, uh, too much lubrication to let the rings seat. So what I would do is I would run some of this to allow the uh, engine and the rings to cut into the cylinder and seat. Once I break the engine in, I'm switching. But the difference between this and this is when you take your plugs out the first time after you break in your motor, my gosh, they're trashed. They're jet black. It stinks in your hull. The, the oil is built up at the end of the exhaust stinger with something garbage like this. This is clean burn. So when you take your plugs out and you look at your cylinders, you're gonna notice a big difference on how your engine looks, how your plugs look. You can get a better reading with your plugs by using a clots like this. So with that said, let's say I want to have the properties of the ski craft synthetic for everyday use as a premix, but then I want a little bit of the racing cast oil just for a peace of mind, you know? Maybe, uh, maybe there's an application for that. And that's what I thought. I started mixing four parts to this to one part to this. Then I asked Klotz and they said, no, you know what you need? You need the Super Techno Plate. Now the Super Techno Plate has the combination of both. It's already blended 80% of the uh, Technoplate and 20% of the racing castor oil. So the Super Technoplate is already a pre-mixed thing. What I've been doing is I've been putting, as I said, 80% of this, 20% of that. I get the smell of castor racing oil. I get the smell of cloths on both of them. I get a little more racing castor oil in there, but not enough to gum up the rings uh, over time. And uh, that's it. But if you're using something that's over 10,000 RPM, that's a really high revving race motor, you're gonna wanna stick just to the bean all straight. Okay, so then you say, well, Eric, I don't have a racing jet ski. I don't have a racing Banshee. I have a KTM 250 or a, a CR500 or a ATC 250 two stroke, and you want something that's just better than what you're using. The motorcycle two stroke Technoplate. Now this isn't really, uh, this is a great product from Klotz, but this isn't what you're looking for as far as a watercraft engine here or a really high revving engine for racing Klotz or racing castor oil. You can use the two-stroke Technoplate motorcycle oil. So that will go in any two-stroke dirt bike or four-wheeler or three-wheeler and give you the same protection of Klotz without having all that other stuff that you don't have, you know? Now, if you have a drag racing CR500 that's got every part known to man and you're really turning high RPMs, then you just go to the Venol. But for the general application for a two-stroke, and I think this would even be good enough in two-stroke uh, chainsaws, weed eaters, edgers, because again, I've heard a lot of people that say, man, I run that stuff in my weed eaters just because it smells good. And we're gonna get to that in a second about something that makes it smell good. We'll show you that. But the Klotz um, two-stroke Technoplate motorcycle oil, and all of these have different numbers. KL300, BC175, KL307. They all have their little designator numbers for their blend, okay? That's just something I picked up. Uh, I use this for assembling parts and pistons and stuff and not using for wasting bean all. I also use it for uh, motorcycle, um, chainsaws and weed eaters and stuff. It's open, it's uh, been laying around a little while, but it's good stuff and it also got that clot smell. So we've talked about the oils. Those are number one big priority right now. We're gonna talk about some other stuff that I have to run. I'm gonna say this again, I have to run it. And this is not because I feel like running it. This is, I have to run this. Octane Booster, let me tell you about Octane Booster for a second, okay? Now I just bought this again. This one actually came with a couple cool clot stickers. I didn't know that, I'll put those on something else. So, Klotz Octane Booster. Um, the reason I have to run it, well, if you're familiar with CDUs or you're familiar with two-stroke racing applications, a bigger, badder pipe, uh, uh, exhaust pipe. I have a factory pipe, not a factory stock pipe. I have a factory pipe. It's a factory performance racing pipe for a CDU. And those are notorious for detonation if you don't have it tuned right. But also, I have the racing buckshot head with high compression. Now, with those two together, I have to have a really high octane rating, higher than pump gas, in order to not blow holes in my pistons. This is the Klotz Higher Octane Booster. They, they both look the same. I think they changed the name to Higher Octane Booster, but essentially, their Klotz Octane Booster is good stuff. This is a tetraethyl lead substitute, and it will, uh, yes, tetraethyl lead substitute. Now, the thing about this is, it will actually raise your octane up to 10 numbers. The higher the octane doesn't necessarily mean, you know, a lot of people think 
you put higher octane in there and your engine's gonna go faster. That's not how it works. Octane rating, if you to not go serious into the R plus M divided by two method and all this with research and motor octane, I'm just gonna tell you that if you're detonating, if you're pinging, if you're knocking because of a lower quality gas, for instance, a lot of people on watercraft like to use Rec 90 because it's uh, ethanol free, only 90 octane. I would blow my motor if I used that. I barely can run 93. If I'm stabbing it at 93 under a full load, she's gonna start detonating. Pow, pow, pow. That's when the piston comes up and compresses it and it explodes before the spark charges. So that's like a wrong timing. That's because of the fact that the octane is not high enough to compress all the way in the cylinder before it's ignited by a spark. So that will essentially bend rods, blow holes in pistons, uh, damage the, the head and the domes above the piston. So I have to raise my octane. Now the way this works is on the back it'll tell you, or on the side, it will tell you, uh, raise pop, pump octane up to 10 numbers and higher. It's catalytic converter safe and oxygen sensor safe for carburetors and fuel injectors, okay? Re improves throttle response and, and acceleration. Why? Because you're not detonating, you're not uh, burning the fuel before it's ready to be burned, okay? Now, it's a lead substitute, and the thing about this is one ounce per gallon will raise octane by two and a half numbers, okay? That means if I took 93 octane and I put an ounce per gallon in here, it would be 95 and a half roughly. It depends on if you're really getting 93 at the pump. If I add two ounces a gallon, I'm going up five numbers, three ounces, seven and a half numbers, and four ounces per gallon is 10, up to 10 numbers. So my 91 would turn into roughly 101 octane. That's about what I run. I use 93 at uh, about three ounces a gallon and it gets me up to about 100. Last time I mixed it, I was at like 102. But the thing about this is if you start with 100 octane, like Sunoco GT260, you're not going to raise it 10 numbers. The higher the octane, the less effect this is going to have. So if you're talking about 104 octane base and then you're gonna add four ounces a gallon to this, you're not gonna raise it to 114. That's uh, properties of how octane rating works and how lead substitute works and stuff like that. But the thing about this also, this is a gallon, okay? And it's a green in nature. The cool thing about this is a lot of these different oils have different colors, like this stuff is red. This stuff is red, this stuff is red, but then this stuff is green, and then you have this other stuff that's like a teal or a blue. That's the properties of what they make it with. All of this is synthetic and made. So, this is a gallon, and this is a pint. Now, I'll burn through this in one filling, okay? And that's roughly 16, 14 bucks from Klotz. It's actually cheaper, I think, to order from Klotz than eBay or Amazon because they mark it up a little bit. So, uh, I'll burn through that. Now, let me show you something. When I ran out of Klotz, I panicked first. Oh my God, I'm out of Klotz, I can't go racing. So I went to the store and I bought this. Now, this seems to have a pretty good rating online. However, this is $27 at AutoZone. And guess what? This only treats 10 gallons, okay? So the difference, now I'm gonna show you a comparison here. Um, this is 50, like $52 for a gallon and it requires less to bring my octane up. So I can get multiple rides out of this gallon. I'm not gonna dump $27 into my tank. I think they have it at other places for $24 every single time. That gets expensive. But the thing that both of these have in combination compared to all these other cheap additives at Walmart and AutoZone is please do your homework. You're not going to get this bottle of 104 octane that says octane booster and raise your octane to 104. It does not work that way. That stuff is more of a fuel injector cleaner. It might bring you up an eighth of a point, but check it out. This brings it up numbers. Every 10 points is one number. If you read a lot of those bottles, they'll say brings your octane up nine points. Guess what? That's nine tenths of an octane point or octane number. So this stuff right here is the most cost effective, but by far the best working. There may be other lead substitutes that work, but I guarantee they're gonna be more expensive and they're not gonna treat as much. Think about it, 24 ounces into a 10 gallon tank. This right here, I can run two ounces a gallon to bring it up to a 95 and a half roughly, and it's gonna save me money using this. That's why I prefer the clots. And why would I use clots everything and then some other brand of something mixed in? I live by clots, so I'm gonna use everything clots. Klotz Octane Booster. Now, if you want real power, if you're talking about dumping money into your engine 
and this just isn't enough or you need more, then you start talking about nitro. Now this stuff is dangerous, guys, okay? The Clot Nitro, I got this and there's only about an ounce missing because I was kind of afraid to use it, all right? This is a power additive. Now this will extract power out of your engine in very dangerous situations if you're not careful. It's 50% nitropropane and 50% coolanol as a blending and cooling agent. Now, coolanol resists detonation and pre-ignition. Dyno tests indicate substantial power increases may be obtained, but you're not throwing this into a stock motor, okay? You have to, this says, take several spark readings, verify jet, use up to four ounces of nitro per gallon, but jet increase up to four sizes are necessary for high compression engines, retard timings two degrees, okay? That's for four stroke. For two strokes, use two ounces per gallon up to a maximum of four. Jet increases up to six sizes may be necessary. So I can guarantee that this is going to, with nitropropane and, and coolanol, this is going to give you power. But if you're using it in a stock engine, it's going to lean out your fuel from the properties of adding nitropropane. So in doing so, running this, you're gonna jet up six sizes in a two stroke. If you're after that race in Banshee, this is it right here. And I will guarantee by reading online, looking at other people, some people didn't do this right and they blew their motor and they say, I'm afraid to use that, it didn't work. Other people that jetted up and retarded or advanced timing the way they needed to to get their engine and detonation under control, they will never run without this. So now you're talking about going into the extreme big boy league when you're talking about running this every time. Yeah, if you're after power and speed, it doesn't, dollars don't affect you, okay? Uh, but if you want power and speed, this is where it's at. It resists detonation. It gives you much more power at the expense of having to jet up. So that means if I'm going to jet up six sizes to keep this running efficiently, I'm never going to be able to go without this stuff. So that limits me. If I run out of this stuff, and there it goes. I'd love to have a bunch of this stuff here if I could afford to just start buying this stuff and really jet up six sizes and try this stuff and really outdo the performance on jet skis. I mean, maybe if I was sponsored by Klotz one day and I had this stuff, I, I really would make the effort to adjust timing and go up six sizes to stay with Nitro. Man, that would be something serious. So that between this and the Octane Booster and the oils, we got more. Let's check out some more stuff here. Now these are of course rusty because they've been sitting outside for a while and I do, I, I did have a couple cans of these, I used them. Let's talk about this one first. This is called Storbalizer. Now for you guys that are riding up north, anything, dirt bikes or jet skis or go-karts and you're up north, you put it away for the winter because it snows, right? We don't know what that's like down here in Florida. Currently 96 in the thermometer in this garage today. So Storbalizer is a gasoline storage and stabilizer. You may be thinking, well, I use Stable, but you know what? This has the class name behind it. This is a lot better. So what this does is it keeps your gas from separating, keeps your oil from separating, keeps the ethanol from damaging seals and gas tanks and stuff like that when it sits in your garage for six months. Um, it says stabilizes ethanol and gasoline mixtures, prevents oxidation and corrosion, six to eight month protection at only one ounce per gallon for six to eight months or two ounces per gallon for 12 to 16 months. This is not going to give you any performance. And if you're burning your gas that fast, if you're riding every weekend, no sense of having this really. But if you're going to prolong you know, gas, this, is, this would even be great for your generators or weed eaters over the summer or the winter when you're not using them. Throw some of this in there and it's really going to keep your gas from separating because you know gas only lasts a few months at most. Start separating after a few weeks. This is called ethanol gasoline phase separation is what I call it, avoids phase separation. Now this is for those who are really plagued with stock motors, but you don't want to run ethanol. You know, if you haven't seen what ethanol will do to your engine, it will destroy and eat some seals. It'll leave white death in your carburetors, which etches the aluminum and it's very bad. Weed eaters, carburetors, gasoline engines, ethanol. They don't like ethanol over a long period of time. So this stuff right here, Four ounces per gallon or more will absorb equal amounts of moisture condensation. Routine maintenance or stabilizer mix one pint to 20 gallons of gas. So this is also like a stabilizer for fuel uh, maintenance. And uh, if excessive amount of water is present after use, drain carburetor and fuel tank because this stuff will attack the water in the fuel. That's what it's designed to do. Ethanol attracts water. So this is a helpful uh, for that, you know, for uh, ethanol fuels because ethanol will attract 
uh, moisture in the air and if it's humid in Florida like it is here or where you're at, this will definitely be a good stabilizer uh, to avoid separation from ethanol fuels in your engine and fuel. Now here's something I didn't mention before. Chris asked me about this the other day. He sent me a text on Facebook thing and he said, Hey, I'm redoing my prop. Here's the old prop he took out, right? I gave him the Solos uh, 1621 Super Camber. And uh, he says, well, what, uh, what do you put in there? You just put regular gear oil? And he had, he had this here. This is 8090, right? And I said, well, you could put that in, sure. But my answer to him was clots. This is all I use. This is clots Technoplate Jet Pump Lube. So this is a thicker synthetic Technoplate, like a B-Nol or a Ski Craft designed for your jet pump in your jet ski. This can be used in any jet ski pump. Uh, it's really viscous, it's got the smell too, even though you're not gonna be smelling burning uh, you know, oil from your jet pump, but it just gives you peace of mind that if you see all this already and you're already hooked, Klotz right here makes a jet pump synthetic lubricant and it will keep your seals from drying out. It will keep your um, bearings from seizing up. It'll, it'll, uh, even, it even suspends water so that the water doesn't sit in the bearings. It'll suspend the water in the oil in case you have a water intrusion in your jet pump. Right here, I'm just about out of this. I have a little bit left. It is red as well, but I have enough maybe to top off my pump. I gotta get some more stuff for that. Here's another oldie but goodie. I say old because it's been sitting there outside. You can tell these cans I've had for a while. Now this is called Fog On, and I'm gonna tell you what I use this for. Now, for those who are up north and you're using the Storbalizer to keep your stuff um, you know, stored, You've heard of fogging a motor, right? This stuff right here, for those who have two strokes and they say, oh, well, I'm starting it just when the spring hits, it's warmed up and I got all this fogging oil in there and it's smoking and the plugs are ruined and it's, what you need to do when you're talking about up north and you're fogging your motor for marine or even any two stroke. Basically you run your motor and you spray this stuff in the intake and almost stall the motor out with it. And that's going to coat all the piston and rings and cylinder walls and bearings so that it's not sitting there for six months in the winter sub-zero temperatures freezing up and turning into a gel. This is an engine storage lubricant, excellent after-run lubrication. Let's say you're going to hit it one good time with E85, methanol or ethanol, and then you're going to let it sit for two months. Bad idea, because that ethanol and methanol are really going to do some pitting in your engine. So this right here is going to keep that from happening. So you fog your motor after you're done, and that's going to keep a thin film over all your parts so that they're not dry when you start it six months down the road. All your parts are nice and looped. And what I use this for, because I don't really have to fog my motor, I can run all winter long. What I use this for is actually um, for if I have engines that I'm rebuilding and they're, you know, like I'm gonna go to Chachi's and he says, well, should I take the plugs out and put some oil in there? Because, you know, uh, it's, it hasn't been run for a while and he wants to get that CD butt running. I'll fog the motor with this before I even get it started. As soon as, you know, I spray it in the cylinders, I spray it in, as soon as I turn the motor over, I'm dumping this in. That way, if it does start after sitting for five years, all the seals and bearings are lubed. Also great for assembling motors. Now they do have a engine assembly lube by Klotz, but I use this for everything. I use it for door jams. I use this stuff for, for uh, you know, car doors. I mean, it smells great. It's a great lubricant. It's, wait, this isn't WD-40, guys. This is a engine storage lubricant that also acts like a traditional engine, uh, 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 a uh, lubricant, you know, you can spray it on anything. It is a little thicker than WD-40, so if you're thinking about using this on something where you just need a little bit of oil, consider that. But so far, I go to put cylinders in, psh, I spray it, spray the crank in there before I put the pistons on, spray the pistons and cylinders, drop the cylinders on. My engine is not going to have a dry start with fog on here. So um, it's still full. This is my second can, but it is uh, faded from the sun. So. Fog on is a good thing to uh, have for engine storage, for fogging your motor, and then after six months, you're gonna start it up and it's not gonna be so um, thick and uh, foamy and smoky like other fogging oils will. Let's take a look at their site here. I wanna show you some other products that they have. Look at the wide range of applications they have. Motorcycle, marine, automotive, RC model lubricants, aerosols, race gas, snowmobile, ATV, even, I'll show you the candle I got, V-Twins, Rebuild, everything. Let's take a trip through here for a second. Let's say you got a motorcycle, okay? Uh, Four-stroke motorcycle, they make, uh, they have all the tech sheets available for all the stuff. For instance, if I click here, it'll give me all the technical detailed information about that uh, oil there, that brand, and the different, you know, part numbers for if you want a 30-gallon drum if you're an extreme racer at a track, you know, all the different stuff here. 
What I like is they have like the film strength and you can see on each one they, they rate it one as like no film strength and 10 as in zero wear. So you can see really which one is more viscous I guess but they have you know uh, motorcycle technoplate plate with integrated transmission so I mean if you have the one where the transmission and the engine share the same oil you know flex drive for uh, transmission lubricant racing fork shock fluid all kinds of stuff there's the stuff I have for the two-stroke super technoplate plate bean all r50 racing technoplate. plate so I mean they got a lot of stuff here now check it out let's go back and go to, uh, I don't know, let's go to Marine. Let's see what they got for Marine here. So four stroke Marine performance. You got uh, lower gear lube, jet pump like I showed you, the outboard Technoplate, there's Mesquite Craft there. There's the Super Technoplate again, Bean All. So a lot of different um, stuff that they have here on, uh, where's the one I wanna show you? Let's go to cart lubricants, this stuff you know special specially formulated for uh, air cooled splash type engines original technoplate that's the one that john klotz himself originally made and again it blends with methanol alcohol ethanol nitromethane gasoline and e85 just some good stuff r50 uh benol again let's go here to rebuild and storage so you'll see the stuff assembly lube kind of looks like the bottle of the klotz jet pump lube the fog on I told you about, the Storbalizer, the ethanol gasoline phase separation treatment. Really, really good stuff. Now let's go here. Let's go to, oh, let me show you a couple things here. Uh, let's go to, where is it? Uh, power additives. Okay, so there's the nitro I told you about, right? The octane booster. Now check this out. Kozak, Kozik, right? This is some extreme stuff right here. It's a gasoline power additive, right? In two or four stroke engines. Um, it's got a pale blue green color. Mix one gallon Kozak or Kozik, Kozak, there it is, with four gallons of gas, and uh, it oxygenates the gas. More oxygen, more burn, right? More power. This stuff right here is uh, some good stuff. Increases horsepower, but again, you want to make sure your engine is running good. You want to make sure it's jetted already correctly. Um, so, you know, it tells you here about it. So let's go back here because I want to show you another one hit rate look at this hit rate <laughs> chris showed me a picture of this this is what we need man well hit rate uh blue green it's 100 percent pure synthetic racing gasoline concentrate so now if you're looking for high octane mix one gallon of hit rate to nine gallons of 91 this will yield an octane rating of a 103 to a 105 depending if you really do have 91 in your pump so wow uh, octane level will work excellent results with compression ratios up to 11 to 1 to 12 to 1 and if you use 100 av gas you can get octane levels of over 110 so that's that's uh, some serious stuff right there so let me show you one more thing here that they have so racing gasoline now if you're a die-hard racer and you know way more about this than me check this out they have different types of leaded and unleaded gas look at this you want some you want some octane here you go 118 octane leaded gasoline look at this it's a dark red color this is sold uh i guess by the five gallon can 30 gallon drum 55 gallon drum it's uh basically you know there's your formula again uh research plus motor divided by two gives you a 118 pump octane um so i mean this is it, it's serious serious race gas here and uh, you have to call them about this because I think to ship this, it's quite expensive uh, to ship this stuff. So you can only buy this from Klotz. But they have all different kinds, you know, Oxygas 113, uh, Oxycrate 108. I mean, all kinds of leaded and unleaded. Man, they just got some cool stuff. And here's here's the shirt I bought here. Where's my shirt? Let me show you the candle here in a second. Why why do they smell uh, sell candles? Well, I'll show you. But here you go. There's my uh, there's my shirt right there. I actually have one of these too. Um, so all kinds of cool stuff here if you want to look really good with the clots apparel I want a sweater I want this Calvin Klein jacket I really want that that'd be cool uh, hat beanie for when it's cold out and they got some cool stuff here even clots chapstick here's the banners I have I have two of those one for Chris's shop and uh, one for when I get my own house one day decals and stuff like that what about this candle what is about this candle handmade by Maria Klotz why candles because that famous clot smell I told you about exists right here in a candle now 
The reason behind this, because back in the day, with the, you know, smell the clots, I mean, the famous clot smell, you can, oh my God, if I lit that in my house, I'd never leave my home. Check this out. It smells so good. Clots oil smells so good when you burn it. People used to run their dirt bikes and stuff in the garage just to smoke it out so they could smell that all day. So then they figured, well, hell, why not make candles? You get the Beanall candle, the Technoplate candle, and you can smell it all day. I'm just afraid to burn it. It's so cool. I really don't want to melt my candle, but yeah, Klotz candles, man. Who in the hell makes oil and candles that smell like it? Klotz. So here's another voice in case you don't believe me. I, I met Almondo. We went down there to uh, buy the jet ski from him, and he's just as gung-ho about these things as we are. He's been dumping money into his skis. Almondo, say hi. What's going on, guys? So listen, check us out. Tell, tell everybody, because we went down there, I remember buying that jet ski from you in West Palm in what, June, and uh, we got to talk, we got to know each other, and I, I told him, or I told you, I said, what are you running for oil, man? And you were like, what, Sea-Doo SPX oil or whatever, and I, I told you about clots, you kind of just blew me off, we didn't know each other. Then you came out rode in the monster hole, and you were smelling it, and I was telling you, and then, what happened? I was using the Sea-Doo XPX oil, Eric was telling me, Every time I he got a chance, yo, dude, you gotta ride this clot soil. The clot soil, the clot soil is the best. It's the best you should get. So I went riding with him in the monster hole. We were talking to him about it, and I was like, all right, I'll switch over. I don't see a difference. Oil is oil, but this clot soil, something else. When I I empty out the tank, filled it up, brand new oil, clots, Seacraft. I've I premixed the tank. 50 to 1, I got a full tank, I took it for a ride. When I tell you the difference on my throttle response was a lot better. It, it was instant, there was no bog, there was no delay, there was no nothing. My, getting up the speed to my full, to my top end, I, there was nothing, it was just straight speed. There was no bog, there was no delay in anything. I didn't think there was gonna be that big of a difference, just changing oil. I mean, I thought oil was oil as long as you don't get like the cheap, cheap shit, but I gotta say, this clots oil is a big difference. A big difference. Now, what about Nick? I, I don't see Nick. This guy is just missing in action. He's got this SPX. He doesn't doesn't come out and ride. What's up with Nick? Buddy Nick, Nick. <laughs> 98 <Nick>. SPX life. <laughs> he, even, I even put him on when I came back. He, he was like, so you switched oils over? I was like, yeah. He's like, well, screw it. If you're doing it, I'll try it. So he threw it in, and we went for a ride on the lake. And I kept telling him it's a big difference. He got on the lake. He was shocked. Just, he looked at me and was like, dude, I didn't even think there was gonna be a fucking difference. But the same way I thought, he thought it was just oil's oil, but if you're gonna ride anything, I would ride clots. That's, it I, smells great too. Oh, and when it burns, it's the best smell in the world. Love it. But if you guys are gonna switch over or just starting with these skis or anything like that, I would go with clots. All day. Smells great. 10 out of 10. <laughs> Lubes up your motors. Your thought of response is a ton ton better like there's no lag in nothing like if i was to get any other oil for the remaining time of me ever having skis it would clots okay so cool thanks almondo another little testimonial there from him but hey you know what now when we're all riding out there with chris and him and, and me and nick and everybody all everybody's gonna smell is clots man they're gonna you know they're just gonna smell all that stuff and it's just gonna be wild out there so the, the point is this, uh, you know, I hope Klotz sees this video so I can thank them as I've thanked them before for just being nice, for the quality product, for never letting me down on the engine. I've never blown an engine. I've never had engine wear out or anything like that because of Klotz. So I want to thank Klotz personally for uh, letting me have the opportunity to use this kind of oil. And there's a lot of options out there. I'm not saying they're all bad. Trust me. I'm not saying there's some people that'll never switch from the Motul and they'll switch from this and that. But if you're if you're running stock oil, if you're running CDU oil, CDU oil or any manufacturer oil is designed to get you through the warranty period. That's all they care about. They don't want your stuff lasting forever because you're never going back to them for service. That's all factory. That's a proven fact. CDU just wants you to get through the warranty period. They're not caring about you and a racing machine or all the money you've dumped in there. CDU is just making a probably a decent oil and you've probably never used anything else but i encourage you to please 
Consider my words and try something like this because I guarantee you won't be sorry. I'm not letting you down, I'm not lying to you. This isn't sponsored, it's just something I have the talent to do on video is to educate you on something you may have not known about. So I hope you learned something from this video. And in the future, when you see clots on the stickers, you see clots on the banner, you see clots anywhere, even on my shirt that I hardly wear because it's just so damn hot out here, know what clot is and know that you're potentially running the best oil on the planet. I want to thank John Klotz and the whole Klotz team for just being nice. I mean, that, that means the world when you call a company and you ask them a question and you get positive results back. It doesn't get any better than that. Thanks guys. Check out Klotz website in the description in links in the description for more details and all their stuff that they have. Thanks for watching. Subscribe, turn on that bell, follow along. I got so many ideas. I just don't have enough time. Peace.